Hi, Chris with RC Worst here, and today we're going to talk about system curves. And I'm going to offer you a simple explanation as to what a system curve is and what information it represents, as well as some of the places that it's used in the industry. So a system curve shows pressure loss at various flow rates within the system. And that, generally speaking, is going to provide an advantage when you're able to see the flow rates across a system and how the, the loss is accumulated. In this graphic, we can see that as flow rate increases, the pressure loss increases with it as well. The relationship is not linear. The graph starts out relatively shallow, and as the flow rate increases along, pressure loss increases dramatically until it essentially just causes a tremendous amount of friction loss. Now let's apply that to some real life information. We've got here a system curve example. And this example is more or less a very, very basic version of a system curve in that it consists of just a single component, 100 feet of one inch schedule 40 PVC pipe. And essentially what we're able to determine by looking at this curve is that there is definitely a nonlinear relationship with flow rate and friction loss. And the nice thing about a system curve is that as compared to the traditional method of calculating friction loss, which is using a chart at a specific flow rate and then adding or uh, getting a sum of your various fittings and the flow rate that you're designing the system for and summing it all together to come up with a total value that may represent a single point on the system curve. A system curve shows the entire flow rate or range of flow rates that could be applied to a system and how those flow rates would interact in terms of head loss. This can provide an advantage when trying to select various components or to design a system in terms of what piping materials to use or what size of pipe and fittings to use. So in this next example we have two different system curves again using a hundred feet of PVC schedule 40 pipe. What we have is two different sizes one inch and inch and a half and we can see that at about 10 gallons per minute on either curve, there's a relatively minimal amount of friction loss that occurs. So for the one inch PVC at 10 gallons per minute, you're gonna have less than 10 feet of friction loss, which is gonna be less than uh, you know, seven or eight PSI roughly. With the inch and a half pipe, you're gonna have almost no friction loss that occurs because it's going to be about one foot of friction loss which is less than half of a PSI. So even at this lower flow rate you can definitely see that it gives you information on uh, trying to target a more efficient operation but perhaps you're trying to save a little bit of money in the pipe fittings and so forth so you opt for the uh, smaller pipe size and are satisfied with the amount of friction loss that occurs. Additionally, if you were designing a system that was targeting perhaps 30 gallons per minute and you wanted to know whether inch and a half pipe or one inch pipe would be the better choice, then it's, it's definitely clear cut in this example. We've got uh, roughly 40 feet or about just under 20 psi of friction loss and then over here we have less than three pounds of, of friction loss that occurs at 30 gallons per minute. When you're trying to compare different components in the system, having a system curve can definitely provide an advantage. Now, when we compare a system curve to the traditional method, as I mentioned before, where you're using a chart of sorts, and the, this, we have an example of one of those charts. This chart was provided courtesy of A.Y. McDonald. They are a manu American manufacturing company. They've been in business in the United States since 1856. They manufacture some high quality plumbing parts as well as uh, pumps. So this friction loss chart is from their Pump Basics booklet. And it kind of showcases various pipe types, so steel versus plastic, as well as sizes. 
and you can see that these characteristics are based on a, a set flow rate. So where a system curve is advantageous is in that a system curve shows various flow rates and the relationship of the head loss that occurs at those flow rates so you can better evaluate for your specific application. Additionally, by visualizing the loss at various flow rates, it can make decision making for pipe selection, plumbing fittings, and the components of the system, but it can also contribute to a more efficient selection when it comes to pump operation as well. So this particular graphic showcases how a system curve can be manipulated in most cases by using software that's designed to create or generate system curves and allows a person to compare and contrast various materials as well as various design layouts to evaluate exactly what type of system curve they want and perhaps to be better equipped to match that system curve to a pump. So if we take this exact system curve and we just lay it over top of an example pump curve, what we can tell is, is a number of different things. First, by looking at this graphic, it should become relatively clear that there's definitely a relationship of being able to balance the system curve with the pump curve in order to make a decision on efficiency or perhaps based on the limitation of the available amperage or a variety of other conditions that can occur. Now let's say that you had a goal of having this pump in your facility and you wanted to so let's say your goal is achieving the most flow however you're limited and must do this with less than 50 horsepower. Well you've run the numbers and you've come up with three possible system curves or three possible system layouts using various fittings and pipe material. What you've come up with in these three layouts is that by using system curve C you can achieve a little bit more flow than the other system curves and that's because you're minimizing your friction loss in that particular configuration. Now if your goal was the most pressure that you can possibly achieve out of this particular pump using this pump curve then configuration B would provide you the opportunity for the most available head pressure based on this pump curve. Now this pump curve doesn't actually have an efficiency curve to it however if that information were available you would be able to leverage the various system layouts with selecting a more efficient pump or a more efficient system to then save energy costs. And this is pretty common on larger systems where it's very important to maximize the energy efficiency of the system. So what we've done is taken a look at how system curves can interact with pump curves, essentially what information a system curve represents, and we've taken a look at a few example system curves Oftentimes, a system curve includes much more than just a, a single component, and it often consists of multiple components, including different sections of pipe and fittings and valves, and more often than not, it, it's composed of a long list of materials, so having the system curve available saves a person the time from having to calculate the friction loss at each possible flow rate on the system. The system curve definitely is advantageous in those cases because a person can easily tell if there are any problem spots on the performance. In most situations, system curves are generated by specialized software that can do so. Now, it's not terribly difficult to put together a systems curve calculator using Excel and it's my intention to put together a video on how to do that down the road. But at this point, you've now got a basic understanding of what a system curve is and kind of how to read it. So I want to thank you for joining me today, and we'll see you next time.